Today, France is marking the 80th anniversary of one of the most notorious episodes in its history. The mass roundup of some 13,000 Jews on this date in 1942, who were then herded into a Paris sports stadium known as Val d'Ivre and held there in subhuman conditions before being deported to concentration and death camps, where most did meet their deaths, including nearly 4,000 children. Now, the Val d'Ivre roundup was carried out by French police at the behest of the Gestapo and is considered maybe the worst example of Vichy France collaboration with the Nazis. French President Emmanuel Macron spoke at a memorial ceremony today. Here's what he, some of what he had to say. The Republican forces of our nation must redouble their vigilance because, yes, the circumstances of 1940 came from afar and it was nourished by hatred, by anti-Semitism that had become ordinary, by half-truth, by this conviction at bottom among some, that France was great when she forgot her own values, when she could free herself from her cumbersome principles of the Republic, which, it seems, had weakened her and convinced others that they were not so important, not so, insen not so essential. Well, joining us for more is Professor Robert Paxton. He is a historian, expert on the Holocaust, especially France. In fact, the author of, quote, Vichy France, Old God and New Order. And he speaks to us uh, from New York. And Professor Paxton, thank you for joining us on this tragic anniversary. Of course, the Valdiv Roundup was only one episode during of, of, of the history of the Holocaust as it applied to France. But why did that incident become the most emblematic of, uh, of the Holocaust as it was carried out? In France, well, it was so spectacular. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, emblematic, uh, and it was very visible. Uh, the streets of Paris, uh, the, the the buses uh, uh, were loaded with uh, with the RSDs and taken out to uh, the intermediate uh, camp at Drancy, and then placed on trains. It was impossible to hide it. It was a very public event. Right. Uh, now, of course, we've seen some countries in recent years in Europe kind of wrestling with their role as uh, the role they played uh, as being occupied by the Germans, but having elements that collaborated. I'm thinking, for example, of Poland. Now, we have France. We, have, we saw our President Macron speaking there. Has France, in your opinion, fully uh, uh, come to grips with uh, the role it played, its collaboration in the Holocaust went on, what went on in Val de Eve and elsewhere? Well, I think they have. It took some time. It wasn't something that happened right away. Uh, the uh, student movements of 1968 uh, was, a, was an important uh, step toward uh, opening things up to, to more, a more honest look at the French past. The young people really wanted to know about their country, uh, the dark parts as well as the, the better parts. And then there is a, a whole generation of young French historians who've been working on this subject. Uh, they've done uh, uh, very honest work and it's part of the school curriculum. And I, I think, and, and of course, there was the famous case of uh, René Paffon, the French chief of police uh, after the war, but who was uh, uh, c condemned in a, in a trial to years of prison for his role in the Holocaust, a, a, a high civil servant, a person whom one might have thought was untouchable uh, and was in fact uh, condemned to a, a prison sentence. So I think that uh, nowadays uh, uh, it's taught in the schools and people are well aware of it. Uh, uh, President Chirac on, on uh, uh, on the anniversary in 1995, made a very striking statement. It was a, quite a change from the earlier, uh, rather vague statements of French presidents uh, accepting French responsibility, uh, uh, shared responsibility for this uh, for this action. But right. I the, I I'm just French curious because, as a historian, what was the reaction there in France at the time and in the years after the war? You said it did take some time for them to come to grips with it. Yes. Well. Well. Um, uh, my book about the uh, France v called Vichy France and the Jews uh, came out in 1981, and it was uh, accepted uh, as, uh, as, uh, as solid research, and it, it wasn't controversial. But an earlier book that was uh, about Vichy France uh, was uh, came out in 1973 in French translation, and it was shocking to a lot of French people, and a lot of French people didn't want to believe uh, that the French had taken an active role in. in uh, uh, in uh, deporting Jews, but uh, uh, evidence is there, and I think now people accept it. 
Right. Uh, now, we heard President Macron speak and kind of relate to uh, the, what happened during the Holocaust. Uh, he used it as a kind of cautionary warning, I would think, uh, to the present day. Uh, some of the statements he made about anti-Semitism being coming to seem a kind of almost ordinary or almost uh, an ordinary part of the French landscape. How much is that legitimate to use or to, to make that kind of comparison between some of the forces that led to the Valdiv roundup and, yes, some of, the, some of the developments that we've seen in France and I'd have to say elsewhere in Europe and elsewhere in the world today? Well, I, I think that... Um uh, I think that uh, anti-Semitism in France is, is vastly weaker today than it was in the 1930s. I've spent a long time reading the French press from the 1930s, and you'll be stunned and shocked by the openness with which um, a number of people and a number of French people would say uh, having all these refugees come in from Eastern Europe and so forth is weakening our country and it's bad for us to have the Jews. And of course, there was Prime Minister Leon Blum, France's first Jewish prime minister, who was the victim of the, the, the vilest kinds of of uh, of accusations from from his opponents uh you don't see that sort of thing today in the french press or in french public life uh, that's not to say that there are not prejudices of various kinds i would have thought that uh, that muslims are much more likely to be the subject of uh, of uh, french unhappiness and perhaps uh, severe measures in France than Jews today. Uh, I think that anti-Semitism is always a danger. Any kind of racial or ethnic prejudice is a danger. But uh, the, the kind of, of uh, emotional reaction uh, of, toward immigration from, uh, from Muslim Africa is much, much stronger today than any kind of Anti-Semitic Right, but very briefly, there are some who say some of the anti-Semitism seeping over into the either the Muslim community or into the, the somewhat resurgent far right in France. Well, it's certainly there. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's as traditional to, to French culture as hostility to black people is to American culture. It's something that's always there. I, I really think it's weakened over time, uh, but it is it, it is present. Uh, and I suppose uh, it could take uh, some sort of extreme form if you had the kind of, of horrendous uh, crisis in France again that France had in uh, 1940 with a different occupation. Well, ho hopefully that certainly won't be the case and some, at least some of the lessons uh, from the Val d'Eve uh, incident uh, will still resonate today and that memory of that uh, tragic episode will be kept alive. Professor Robert Paxton, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.